Hi everyone, my name's Phil, and I'd like to show you a brief walkthrough of our Lumen Dare Jam Game Braille. The game was created over a 72 hour period by me, who was responsible for the art in the game, and Rudy, the coding. You play as a small, vulnerable blind girl searching for her guardian. She wakes to the beeping sound of medical equipment, which pulses in the darkness allowing the player to see beyond the girl's small, visible radius. We see the world as the young blind girl hears it, and is provided as diegetic sound to the player. As the girl lands from a jump, the sound is louder, providing more visibility to the player. Her footsteps can be seen as well as heard as little pulses near her feet. The audio, together with the visuals, shows how the girl understands her world. The rock throwing mechanic was primarily added so the player could see in the darkness. It is used to see potential dangers that lie ahead. This awareness is key for the later challenges the girl faces. Secondly, this mechanic can be used for puzzles or defending against enemies. The player can achieve great precision with the rock throw by controlling its power and direction with the mouse. The dark themes and the decayed nature of the visuals show the fractured mental state of the girl. The sketchy shapes and the background textures is the world that she feels. Subtle details are heightened by the girl's sense of hearing. A small rat is a big visual cue for the player. You see the rat, you follow it. Here you can see the rock mechanic effectively used to reveal what's ahead. The player is first introduced to the snapping branch. A small challenge is then presented with them. With the challenge comes increased danger. The background humming noise is louder than before. The themes become darker and less visual cues are given. The many skulls and the graveyard ahead increase the dark theme. Unfortunately, the teddy didn't make it. Perhaps the girl will have better luck than him. As the player balances over an edge, the camera suddenly moves down to see what's below. It's safe for now. As we get deeper into the well, we get deeper into the girl's mind and the themes get darker. It's best to be cautious, as you never know what lies ahead. Something as small as a drip of water can provide much needed visual information for the player. The player here successfully scouts ahead to uncover possible dangers on the right side. The zombie-like nurse hints at the previous medical torture that the girl's been put under. Throwing rocks only hinders its progress towards you. You learn from your previous mistakes. The girl can grab ledges, making the platforming action more forgiving. Instead of timing puzzles and pixel-perfect jumps, the focus is more on exploration. With most of the screen shrouded by darkness, even the simplest platforming challenges can catch the player out. Stuffed animals have been hung at the entrance to the next area of the crypt, but there's one noose left empty. Ooh, not too cautious there, but you're reminded of it. What does an overprotected blind girl know of beyond her own room? The girl's fears manifest themselves as the toys that she is so familiar with.
areas have to be fully explored to be seen. Secrets are well hidden. words with a mechanical hum, the hum that is already associated with danger. A glimmer of hope. Perhaps she can forget her medical issues and overcome the trauma of the past. There seems to be no clear way ahead, other than down the hole. You must have faith to proceed on this journey. So as the walkthrough comes to a close, I'd like to say thank you for watching. Make sure you check out our quad screen 72 hour time lapse if you'd like to play the game follow the links provided and um, give it a shot thank you again